the young people don't get the education they need because you're sending them right into the prison pipeline. You know, we've got all these kids, you know, they don't, they don't get taken care of in school. But I think the overriding thing that really, really upset me the most and that I saw the most is the attitude of, you know, the people doing the discrimination. And the thing I saw the most was that you're not entitled to extras. You know, they, they always saw the accommodations as a, a benefit that other people didn't get. They, they just don't understand the concept of leveling the playing field, you know, of saying that, you know, it's, it's not an extra benefit to give me a ramp into the building. You're just getting me into the building so that I can take this science course or this math course, you know, and, and that was, that's the hardest thing for me. I still, I still see that every day in the papers. Um, you know, the people who want accommodations in college and law school and the bar exam. And everyone from governments to corporations bent over backwards to make sure that they got everyone on Zoom and everyone got used to this thing, right? Yeah. So I think that we need to really make it clear that you need to do this, right? Otherwise, your, your business suffers if not for that yeah and i one thing i'm noticing in in a lot of the disability civil rights cases now or, or people, clients who are coming forward is we thought that we had made progress we had proven that you could work from home we had proven that you know zoom or you know microsoft teams that you could do this and all of a sudden we're finding that the businesses don't want to do it anymore even though, you know, it cuts down on a lot of costs and they're saying, you know, people with disabilities are saying, but it's so much better for me to only, you know, sometimes traveling is really hard. We don't have accessible transportation. I can stay at home and work. We have a number of people coming forward who are saying, you know, I did really, really well during COVID and they want to take away all of my accommodations. And, and I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't, I don't, understand why you would do that um to me it, keeping the talent the people you've already trained they have the connections with your clients you know i don't i don't know why they're forcing people out except to think the worst you know they don't want people with disabilities in their business they're nominated um where people would say she's just a di hire and for anybody in disability advocacy, that was a, a shot in the heart, <laughs> pretty much, because you know it was like it's so much more than just diversity. Uh, there's also equity and inclusion that needs to be thought about. And that says a lot about you and what your values yeah. are. It's been very frustrating for DEI because when it first came out and I saw, you know, diversity, I included myself and slowly came to understand that it doesn't include me. It doesn't include disability. And it's the main focus has been, has been race, which is in very important. We need that yeah, diversity. Definitely. But um, I had actually my, law school that I that I went to here in town um, I had some issues when I wrote to the dean um,